Hey there, curious minds. Have you ever wondered how your favorite sweets like fudge, toffees, or even a simple caramel are made? There's a fascinating process behind these treats called crystallization, which plays a crucial role in their texture and taste. Today, we're diving deep into the science of crystallization, breaking it down in a way that's easy to understand, even if you're just getting started in the kitchen. Stick around, because by the end of this video, you'll be able to appreciate the sweet science behind those delightful desserts. Imagine biting into a piece of fudge and feeling that smooth, melt-in-your-mouth texture. Ever wondered why it's so different from the crunch of a toffee? The secret lies in the tiny sugar crystals that form during the cooking process. But how do these crystals form and what makes them different in each sweet treat? Let's find out. Crystallization is the process where sugar molecules come together to form solid structures or crystals. Picture a crystal as a tiny, perfectly shaped sugar building block. But here's the catch. Crystals only form when a sugar solution becomes supersaturated, meaning there's more sugar in the liquid than can stay dissolved. This happens when the sugar solution is heated. Crystals start to form around tiny particles called nuclei. Think of nuclei as the seeds from which crystals grow. If only a few nuclei form, the crystals grow large, leading to a coarser texture, like in toffee. But if many nuclei form, we get lots of tiny crystals, which create a smooth texture, like in fudge. Nuclei formation is where the magic begins. These nuclei can appear anywhere in the solution, and crystallization starts around them. If you want bigger crystals, you need fewer nuclei, and vice versa. Adding a few crystals to the solution, called seeding, can jumpstart the crystallization process. It's like giving the sugar molecules a head start. The more supersaturated the solution, the more likely crystals will form. For example, when making fondant, syrup boiled at a higher temperature has more sugar, which means more nuclei and crystals. Temperature plays a huge role in crystal size. Higher temperatures lead to larger crystals, while lower temperatures favor smaller ones. So, if you're making fudge, you'd want to cool the syrup slowly to get that smooth texture. Stirring or agitating the solution can also affect crystallization. Continuous stirring helps form many small crystals, giving a finer texture to the final product. Adding other sugars, like glucose or fructose, slows down the crystallization of sucrose, table sugar. This is why some sweets have that soft, chewy texture. It's all about controlling the crystallization process. As you cook sugar, it passes through different stages, each leading to a different kind of candy. For instance, at the syrup stage, which is around 110 to 112 degrees Celsius, when you drop the syrup from a spoon, it forms a thin, long thread about 5 centimeters long. This stage is typically used for sugar syrups that remain liquid, like those used in sweets or as glazes. Next, we have the soft ball stage, between 112 and 115 degrees Celsius. When syrup is dropped into cold water, it forms a soft, flexible ball that flattens upon removal from the water. This stage is perfect for making fudge, barfi, and fondant, where a soft, creamy texture is desired. Then, there's the firm ball stage at 118 to 120 degrees Celsius. The syrup forms a firm, slightly pliable ball when dropped into cold water. The ball holds its shape, but is still moldable. This stage is ideal for making caramels, which need to be firm yet chewy. Moving on to the hard ball stage from 120 to 130 degrees Celsius. The syrup forms a hard ball when dropped into cold water, which holds its shape and is not easily flattened. This stage is used for making divinity, marshmallows, and some lollipops, which need a firmer texture. The soft crack stage is between 132 to 143 degrees Celsius. The syrup forms threads that are hard but not brittle when dropped into cold water. These threads can bend before breaking. Perfect for butterscotch, toffees and nut brittles, where a soft but firm texture is needed. At the hard crack stage from 150 to 154 degrees Celsius, the syrup forms brittle threads that easily break when dropped into cold water. This stage is used for making hard candies like brittle or toffee which have a crisp texture. The clear liquid stage happens at 160 degrees Celsius where sugar melts completely into a clear liquid. 
This stage is used to make sugar decorations and some candies that require a smooth, clear appearance. Finally, the brown liquid stage or caramelization occurs at 170 degrees Celsius. The sugar begins to caramelize, turning into a golden brown liquid with a rich flavor. This stage is essential for making caramel, which is used in various desserts for its deep, complex flavor. So, there you have it. The art and science of crystallization is what turns simple sugar into a wide variety of delicious treats. Whether you're a fan of the smooth texture of fudge or the crunch of a good toffee, now you know it all comes down to how those sugar crystals form. Next time you're in the kitchen, remember that you're not just cooking, you're playing with science. And trust me, understanding this process will make your desserts even sweeter. If you enjoyed learning about the sweet science behind your favorite candies, don't forget to like this video, share it with your friends and drop a comment below if you have any questions or just want to say hi. And of course, hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss out on more tasty science videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.